President Trump, I have to get used to saying that, yes. President Trump spoke, so at, spoke at the CIA today and he addressed, among other things, the issue of crowd size, the size of the crowd yesterday compared to today. He's talking about that at the CIA. At the CIA. This is his first meeting at the CIA. True. And he's obsessed with how big the crowd was yesterday. Versus today. Versus today. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, well, first of all, did he even see this today? I've never seen anything this huge here. I mean, I was at the protest against Nixon at his inauguration. It was a tiny crowd compared to this. I've never, I couldn't see the, I couldn't see how far back it went, and I was on the so stage. So even you were surprised as one who spoke. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they said 200,000 would come. I thought, you know what? It's going to be closer to half a million. It by the end of it, and the and the metro subways were still jammed. The people getting off. Four hours later, uh, it had to be around a million in my estimation from having been to so many demonstrations here. And I think the reason why is because I asked the crowd during my speech, how many of you are here for the first time at a demonstration in Washington, D.C.? And I would say half of the crowd raised their hand. And I thought, yeah, yeah. Because I talked to a group of ladies uh, from uh, Asheville, North Carolina. They, were, they called themselves the Asheville uh, Nine. And I said, how many, how many of you are here from Asheville? that have never been here before to a de demonstration. All nine? Eight, eight had never been here at a demonstration. I listened to your speech. You talked about running for office. I mean, you had a message. Your, your message was, hey, I ran when I was 18 years old right. in Michigan right. for the school board, yes. and I was elected, Correct. and you wanted them to get out there and do likewise. Yes, I want <clears throat> as many people as possible, anybody watching this, I want you to run for office, even if it's just for precinct delegate. Everybody has to now get off the bench and participate in the democracy. This is not a spectator sport. It's a participatory event. And, and I'm telling you, if you are feeling bad that the gene pool has been so depleted when it comes to politicians in, in both parties, this is the time now to get up off the bench. If you think you can do better, I'm going to tell you what, you probably can do better. <laughs> Don't hold back now. This is the time to get involved. Run for office. You know, form your local rapid response team call Congress every day. They have a phone number. You pay for that number. 202-225-3121. Right? So spoken like a man who's dialed those digits. I have dialed those digits. <laughs> and, I'm gonna, and, here's the, and here's the good news. A human being picks up. Right. It's not a robo thing. It's not It's not somebody in, in, in Singapore. You know, it's been outsourced. They've actually kept the jobs right here behind us. A, a person picks up the phone and says, uh, and you say, I want to talk to my Congress uh, person, but I don't know his name. Well, what's your zip code? She goes, uh, 10003. Well, bingo. There it, is. there it is. And then and then they ask you, would you like the private line? They'll give you the direct line. That's how cool this democracy still is. Does part of Michael Moore looking out at that sea of people today, not just women, but that sea of people, say, damn it, where were you all on November the 8th? Well, I think this crowd was there. I mean, I'm sure they voted. Um, it's what didn't we do to bring our friends and neighbors. What's and, the answer to that? Uh, next time, don't, first of all, too many, I'm sure, of these people here today would admit that they were doing an end zone dance, a victory dance, popping the corks back after the convention in the summer. Everybody said it. The network said it. The polls said it. She's going to win. And she did when you count a national vote. Popular vote. But that's not how the system works. I don't like the system the way it is. I want to change it. Right. But didn't anybody at the DNC or in the campaign in Brooklyn do some math and go, you know what, it's, it is an electoral college thing. How are we doing in those states? And I'm like trying to call them in the summer, in the fall. Listen, I live in Michigan. This isn't good. Hillary hasn't been to Wisconsin in, in seven months. We love her. Let's get her out here. Come on. You know, and couldn't get through. One final issue. Yeah. What of the idea that says, hey, give the guy a chance? I mean, it's it's day one for him, and you've got hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people coming out today. He's not done anything yet. I actually usually believe in that sentiment. The problem is he has done something. He spent 18 months viciously offending and attacking mostly people who are voiceless and powerless. He didn't set the table for us to sit down together and break bread and work together. That's the problem. We didn't start that. He started that. He has never apologized for it. 
and even in his in his speech yesterday was still in this angry mode and this guy is constantly it's like you said he's over at the cia right now talking about oh, my numbers are bigger and it's like dude you won what don't be a sore winner why are you still fighting refighting the election and the numbers here today and all this you sound like a guy who thinks he lost me thinks you protest too much about the protest <laughs> you know it's it's really but you see can i just say quickly that's his achilles heel that he is so sensitive he has sure. such a yeah. thin skin so i encourage everybody we need to form an army of comedy and satire this is his undoing he can't take alec baldwin wait till he starts taking the rest of america who's ridiculing him and making fun of him and using their sense of humor uh, that will get that will discombobulate him so much it could be his undoing I honestly believe it could be the first president brought down by satire. I know I said that was my last question. I yep, promise this will be. Okay, I promise. I, I promise to make it the last answer. I've never seen so much creativity as I saw today on the signs. Oh, they were great. Has the word been normalized? Oh, that word. Yeah. Um, women have normalized it and owned it. But not us. And, no. Okay. No, I think that's a not a good idea. And I think women have had enough of us and our language. Right that uh, it's time to show some respect, but let them own the word. The word has now power that they're going to use with it. And, and um, but, but you're right, not just that, but the creativity of all these signs. One of my, I think my favorite sign was the one that said, hey, I don't usually like carrying signs, but geez, <laughs> <laughs> this guy is so bad. Right. I had to carry a sign today. So it's, uh, listen, we got a lot of work to do, but um, I think everybody feels Good about the fact that they know they're in the majority and in past demonstrations on this mall martin luther king you go back all the way they didn't have the majority of the country with them at that time the suffragettes didn't have the majority of the people with them at that time and yet victory after victory after victory has moved this great country forward to being in a better place and it will happen again thank you michael thank you very much michael. appreciate it